Hi everybody, my name is Professor Miller and I'm going to be your General Chemistry 1 instructor for Spring 2021. I wanted to make a short video to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what's coming and to just say hi and um, I don't know, maybe introduce myself a little bit. Um, you'll have the chance to introduce yourselves um, in the discussion board and also when we have class this week. Uh, depending which section you're in, we have two different Gen Chem 1 sections this spring. There is one that meets on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and there's another one that meets on Thursdays at 545. They will both be on Zoom. We're not going to be in person for class, um, which is actually better uh, because it's easier to hear me, basically. You can see my face, and we can talk to each other a lot more directly on Zoom. Uh, as difficult as technology can sometimes be, it actually has been working pretty well. Um, for your lab, though, which I may or may not be your lab instructor. I am the lecture instructor for all of the general chemistry courses, but I might not be your lab teacher because I only have space to fit one lab for Gen Chem 1 in my schedule. But um, whoever your professor is, they will have sent you an email by now telling you whether you're in Group A or Group B for lab. What that means is um, it's going to give you an indication which schedule to follow. We have two different schedules, okay? And so essentially each person will be on campus um, half of the time. And so to begin week one, what we do is group A is going to come for the first hour of lab and group B is going to come for the last hour of lab. That allows us to, you know, sanitize your stations in between and set up all the chemicals for you. In week two, that's going to change so that only group A is coming in person and you will be there for the entire three hour period. And then week three, group B will be in person. Now that doesn't mean you're not doing anything when you're at home. We do have lab experiments, um, some of them hands-on labs, some of them digital stuff. Um, but all of them equally important to what we do in person. So you'll have half of your work at home, half of your work in person. Okay, but it's important to check your email and look for an email from your lab professor. And that will tell you uh, when you need to be coming to lab this week. Okay. For lecture, your main focus this week is to log in to Blackboard, explore the syllabus, uh, I have also made an orientation video, so if you are not familiar with Blackboard, it will help you learn how to navigate it. Um, and then you're going to take an assessment in our online homework system. So there is no textbook for this course. It's all digital online free stuff, which is great because the old textbook um, was about two to three hundred dollars, depending which kind of version of it that you bought. Um, so instead, we are using a $60 homework system called Alex, and it's actually a lot more than a homework system. It's a really great way of learning chemistry very well, okay? And so the initial part of that is you need to go online, and it's going to guide you through some questions, about 25 or 30 questions for the initial knowledge check. And during that time, the computer is figuring out what you already know. And that's really important because if you already know a whole bunch of things, it's going to give you credit for that. It's not going to make you go through a bunch of material that you don't need. Okay. After your initial knowledge check, if there are things that you need to know before really jumping into chemistry, that's your task this week. Okay. And so it's going to be different for each person. Don't be surprised if someone in your class has no prerequisite topics that they have to cover this week. I um, haven't seen that, but it's possible, okay? Um, you should plan to spend significant amounts of time in Alex during the week. You have a grade that is for spending at least one hour a day, three days a week in Alex. So that means three hours total per week. And I break it up on a daily sort of schedule on purpose because if I say three hours a week, then everyone's going to cram it all into the day it's due. And that is really the worst way you could possibly learn. I don't want anybody to do that because it's going to be so frustrating for you. Uh, your brain can only remember about six things at a time. And sometimes those things are not the things we want, right? Sometimes it's going to be something like, 
uh, your grocery list or you know you have an appointment coming up or something like that can occupy that space so the only way to get around that is to space your learning out across the week you should probably pretend like this is normal scheduling for for college classes which typically run on a monday wednesday friday schedule meaning you come to class for one hour monday one hour wednesday one hour on friday um, or sometimes we also do a tuesday thursday where you do 90 minutes on tuesday 90 minutes on thursday um, but either way, it's spaced out, right? You're not cramming everything into one study session. That's a really important skill. So I actually am grading you on study skills in a way, right? So by splitting up your learning across that time, you'll get the points every week. The first week, there are no particular points for, for Alex's time because I'm giving you a chance to get in and get it oriented to it. But starting um, next week, you'll want to make sure you're in there several days each week and um, really your goal is to master whatever topics I assigned in that week but as well you need to spend a certain amount of time three hours uh, spread out over the week okay and now that could be on the weekend it could be um, evenings you know it doesn't matter when you go in and do it that's the asynchronous part of our course but what matters is that you're doing it and you're keeping up because once you get behind it's pretty tough to catch up so um, it's important to plan your study time. In order to help you with that, right in the syllabus, I give you a schedule of events, basically, OK? It has all four tests on there, when we're going to take them, um, even what topics are, they're going to be on or is listed in the syllabus. All of that is available right in Blackboard. Just click on syllabus, OK? Um, in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of really, really useful information, like what kind of software are you going to need, what kind of um, materials for the course are you going to need. Um, most of the stuff you need is for lab, uh, besides Alex. And by the way, I don't want you to buy an Alex code. It's already integrated into your tuition and fees, um, because I need you to have access to it the first day of classes. So don't go out and buy a code. There's no website to go to. I'm going to show you right now how to log into Blackboard and find Alex, okay? So for students, they give you this information about what your login, uh, your username and password are gonna be, your login credentials here. Uh, it will be a little different than mine, so don't worry about that part. Oh, I gotta type my password correctly though. <laughs> All right, and so what you're gonna see uh, is something kind of similar to this. Uh, you're gonna have some courses listed on the side over here. All of yours are probably going to be different. All of mine are chemistry because that's all I teach. Um, you'll select whichever course applies to you. So if you're looking for lecture, that'll be one link. Your lab will be a different link. So for Thursday night lecture, this is what it looks like. It's going to say online Thursday, 5.45 to 6.40. That's our class time. That's not the total time you spend on chemistry each week. Just to note, chemistry is a four credit course, right? And the rule of thumb says, that um, for, a f for a three credit lecture, one hour lab, one credit hour lab, it's not literally an hour, it's actually three. The way that the calculations work, and these are, these are not determined by me or the college, these are, these are from our accreditors, the people who allow us to grant degrees. The way that it works is if you have a three credit hour lecture, you're supposed to be in class for three 50 minute sessions each week. Uh, so let's call that three hours, right? Um, and then at home, you're expected to do twice that um, in hours of studying. So on your own. College is mostly studying at home, which is really different from high school. So all together, in a normal three-credit lecture, you have three credit hours of in-person work normally, and then you would have six credit hours of at-home work. So all together, for just the lecture part, you're expected to be spending about nine hours every week, okay? And if you do the math, if 12 credit hours uh, is full-time enrollment, and each one of those, this is a right. So if if 12 credit hours is a full-time load, which it is, then that's your minimum, by the way. Most science majors are a little higher than that because labs take up quite a bit of your time. Anyway, so 12 credit hours being uh, full-time enrollment, you would spend um, 36 hours a week doing school, 
Okay, that's your study time and your in-class time put together, which is kind of the world we're living in right now, right? Because um, those two things are kind of melding together more and more as we uh, exist in the post-COVID world, right? Okay, so each class is going to have slightly different colors in the background, but you'll know you're in the right spot when you see my little lab graphic here. I post our most recent announcements first, so anything I've sent out most recently you'll see at the top of this list. Right now there's nothing there because I haven't sent anything to you because this video is going to be the first thing I send, right? But this is where you can keep in touch. I also email them to you, so you should be checking your student email account frequently to make sure you're not missing any new information. Um, over here you see the meat of our course, right? So I told you the syllabus is one of the most important things for you. You should be looking at this regularly. This is your guide to the course. It is super lengthy because SUNY requires a whole bunch of very detailed information for online courses. Um, I've worked really hard to meet those standards and I realize it's a lot of reading. So my suggestion as a general study skill anyway is to chunk it into little pieces. Don't try to sit here and read this whole thing, all right? Um, you are more than welcome to download your own copy of this, and then you can even make notes on it, right? So if you're in Google, this is, I use Google a lot, so this is a skill to, to know. You can create a copy for yourself, and then you can make comments, you can change things up, you can look at, um, you know, you can make your own notes on it. And so that's a good strategy to use. So the syllabus uh, also has our Zoom link for my office hours. So my office hours are spread out across the entire week and all kinds of different times of day because I never know when online students will need it. And this is where you're going to find your link for your class. I made it yellow so that it was easy to find. The passcode is case sensitive, so when you type in that password, make sure that it's correct. It's the same for office hours as it is for class. But this is the link we'll go to for our class sessions, right? So this is Tuesday's link, and Thursday has a different link, so make sure you look at your own syllabus. Okay, other stuff that's in here, um, and this is going to look a little bit, I'll turn it on so maybe it's student view. Um, when you go to the course documents, it has, first off, a link to Alex. This is where you will go to get started this week. That's your main focus. You're going to spend some time doing your prerequisite reviews. That is due, and you're graded on that. You're Grade it on your due dates in Alex. Um, it's due on Friday, 3 p.m., so make sure you set aside some time to go in there and get that out of the way. You don't need to study for that. You just need to go in and do your best. It, it benefits you to do as good as you can so you don't have to repeat too much stuff. And then I have listed the reading for Chapter 1 here and kind of a little schedule, and I'm going to update this note every week so that you have it, okay? And then... In, in module one, you'll find, when you're ready, after the prerequisite review is done, you'll find all kinds of videos that you get to watch, um, along with notes to fill in uh, on the material, on what we're learning each week. Okay, and so as we go along, you'll see more and more things opening up in the course documents for you. I'm also going to add a resources folder in this area. It's going to have information about how to scan files so that I can see your, your paper, your work that you've done on paper. It's going to have information about how to use Blackboard, and it's also going to have really important information about lab safety, which will also be in your lab courses. Uh, you're going to have a safety quiz the second time you come into lab, uh, which is based on all of that information. So anyway, that's your overview. I really am excited to get started. I can't wait. Oh, one more important couple of things, actually. I'm sorry. The discussion board is located here. You just click on it, and there, there will be different threads you can subscribe to or you can post in. The first one will be an introduction. Just read the prompt, write up an answer. You can also record a video or an audio recording even if you wanted to. Either way is fine with me. And finally, we have these two last important things. Email Professor M. So that's me. You don't even have to know my email address to get in touch. Just click this link and a pop-up will appear and you can, you can ask me whatever you want. The advantage of doing it that way is it tells me what class you're in, so I don't have to ask you that question um, because I do have three lectures and five labs, so it's a little difficult to, maybe four labs. It's difficult to remember where everybody is coming from, but if you click here, 
um, that will tell me what class you're in. If you email me from your normal student email address, just please tell me which day of the week you see me or if you're in Gen Chem 1 or Gen Chem 2. Okay. And then as we go through the semester, you can check this to find out where your current grade is. I try to keep that as up to date as possible. Um, and that's it, guys. I'm looking forward to the semester. I can't wait to see you.